This is Support is Sexy, episode 296, with Miriam Taylor, founder of Maxima. Welcome to Support is Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I interview inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and their lessons to help you take your business and your life to the next level and create something sexy. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I'm so happy to have you here. It just would not be the same without you. And we are counting down to the final deadline for the Create Something Sexy Mastermind. It's this Friday, September 1st. So if you're interested in being part of an intimate group of hand-selected women entrepreneurs who are there to support you and who want to see you win and who want to help you create the sexy business and life that you deserve, I need you to go to createsomethingsexy.com so you can check out all the details, see if it's a good fit for you. I'd love to learn more about what you're up to and see if I can support you. createsomethingsexy.com. Check it out before Friday, September 1st. And now I'm so excited to introduce you to today's guest, Miriam Taylor. And Miriam comes to us all the way from Portugal and she talks to us about her brand, which she is the founder and very fittingly, the dreamer in chief of Makshima. And Makshima is a hair care line, but it's so much more. And that's what I love about Miriam's story. She is thinking of the grand vision of how her brand overall can have an impact on the world. And that really comes from her background as a social activist, which you'll hear about in this episode. But Makshima is the first luxury hair care line for multi-textured hair. And I want you to make sure, of course, because you know we got some goodies for you, to listen all the way to the end because Miriam surprised even me with a special offer just for supportive sexy listeners. So I'm going to tell you more about it. Make sure that you listen all the way to the end. Now, before we jump in, what else you'll learn from Miriam is how to create a product that reflects who you are as a person, launching a beauty brand that's truly innovative, how to incorporate a social good component into your brand, which so many of us want to do now. And she talks about the ways that she's done that on many levels. Miriam's advice for how to test your products before going to market, why she believes in the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. And also why you have to always believe in the possibilities. You know, I talk about the possibilities a lot on this podcast. It's what we all have to continue to believe in. And Miriam has an inspirational message about that. All right. So now, without further ado, Miriam Taylor. So Miriam, thank you so much for joining us for our episode of Support is Sexy. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you, Elaine. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share my story with your listeners. Absolutely. So our first question, when did you first fall in love with entrepreneurship? Uh, Interesting enough, I had my very first business at the age of seven. Oh. (laughs) And it was a homemade collection of perfume and oils made from roses and lemon, which I used to sell to my parents and aunties. I recall my Auntie Tina was my best client. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Now, how did you first start doing that? Where did that interest come from? I don't know. I was always very uh, passionate for uh, for perfumes and and oils. And I always had this curiosity. Um, And uh, that was just, uh, yeah, (laughs) I don't know how... (laughs) Just an inch, a natural interest of yours. Yeah, yeah. But then I, I never did anything related to, to it after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, until only when I established the company five years ago. Right. Because I actually graduated as a, a theater actress in London. Um, but I specialized in uh, theater of the oppressed which is uh, connected to social uh, causes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, where did you grow up? 
uh, I grew up in Portugal. My my I was born in Portugal. As a matter of fact, my parents came to 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 Europe as war refugees in 1976. So I was born in in the south of Portugal in the Algarve on July the third, the same year, and I ended up gr growing up in Faro, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. And your parents were refugees from Angola. From Angola, that's mm -hmm. correct. Yes. So what was uh, a young um, Miriam like growing up in Portugal? Well, you know, being a minority has made me very conscious of all the underrepresented voices around the world. And it, this has always propelled me to be socially engaged. I was always very rebel. You know, back in the days, I am 41 today. But um, back in the days, uh, Portugal was even more provincial than, than it is nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, so people used to uh, uh, to call me all types, to bull me all the time and uh, tell me, you Negro, go back to your country. Mm. Uh, so it was, uh, that, but that made me... Not, you know, not, I, I was very strong all mm -hmm. the time because my mother was also a political activist. And this is the reason why they came to Portugal, because she was always very, she was a fighter, a warrior. So I think I, I, I am like her. I, I, I always stood up, you know, for what I believed in. So, uh, and I, I became very engaged uh, within my own community on on. Uh, on fighting for uh, social justice and civil rights. Since I was very young, I, I should say, I started to be engaged when I was 15. And that uh, went on. That's why precisely later when I graduated uh, at the theater school, I, I, I also specialized on theater of the oppressed which is uh, a practice that uh, tries to change the reality of the oppressed. Now, how does, when the, you say theater of the oppressed, is that po the certain types of performances or how does it? Yes, it's a, it's a, it falls into the category of political theater. Mm. Uh, so basically we work on focus groups. Let's say I work, for instance, for example, with uh, victims of domestic violence in Paris or war orphans in Angola. And what we do, we rehearse. Uh, reality mm -hmm. in order to change it. Uh, so basically, we work on the problem and then we rehearse ways to overcome it, uh, giving those types of tools to the people involved in this in, in, on the focus group. Well, yes. now, what did you think? Um, did you have an idea at that time what you wanted to be after going to college, after going to school and studying theater of the oppressed? Did you have an idea of, of what you thought you might do after that? Well, my uh, idea was always to contribute to a better world. I, I, I think that's ultimately what what I wanted and what I still want. And this is why I, I, I have, uh, well, ended, ended up designing the platform as it is now, uh, working on a full circle, being very conscious mm -hmm. on, on, on all issues, social and ecological issues that needs to be changed. What kind of um, work did you do right after school? What kind of things did you do? Were you always in the space of activism? Has that always been a part of it? Yes. It sounds like it's always yes. been a part of your yes, life. Yes, I was. I was. After, after I graduated, I worked, as I said, with uh, domestic violence victims in Paris, with war orphans in Angola, with um, uh, housemates in, in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with uh, prisoners uh, in Brazil and in here as well, in Portugal. So basically, I was always very uh, active uh, socially, uh, because my uh, specialization as the theater of the oppressed uh, Coringa uh, allowed me to join what I love the most, art and uh, uh, and social uh, community involvement, engagement. 
So at what point then you mentioned, or how I should say, uh, how did five years ago you end up establishing Mushima, which is your company that you have now? How did that happen? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Tell us the story. So basically, <laughs> basically, the story is I was living in, in Amsterdam at the time. I, I, I was pregnant. I got pregnant. And then I had to stop relaxing my hair because, Elaine, I did relax my hair for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, because I thought it was a way to make it more manageable. Someone made me believe that. And I believe that uh, for, for a long, long period. Although I was the type of person that would relax and not wear it straight. But I, I did relax my hair for many years. Uh, stupid me. <laughs> <laughs> we all, but, many uh, of us did. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, but thanks God, uh, when I got pregnant, that hit me uh, so much so that I, well, it was not only about me anymore, to tell you the truth, because it's okay, we don't care too much sometimes about ourselves, but when it becomes the other person that we we are supposed to be trusting that baby, you know. Um, uh, so uh, the the case, the story changes, and then uh, I decided to 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 stop relaxing and and review uh, things I was doing to myself. Um, and then I tried to find products. Uh, I tried to find products that were more suitable for my hair type and that could perform. The, the job well and uh, what I realized was that even like the best products I found what used to happen to me was they would work for two three weeks very well and then my hair would get used to it to them and uh, it wouldn't work anymore mm -hmm. the same way so uh, that became a problem and it was very frustrating and uh, I was really annoyed and pregnant, <laughs> annoyed with my hair because I couldn't figure out how, how, what could I do to it. And, uh, and my, my husband, Paolo Taylor, has uh, then thought, uh, uh, spotted the opportunity. She said, okay, he said, well, okay, if you cannot find it, maybe you have to create it. <laughs> right. That's and that this is how uh, we have together jumped into this uh, journey. And uh, yes, we have created the company five years ago. And for over four years, we have been uh, developing the, the formulations. And uh, it took us four years to arrive to these formulations. And I'm really, really proud of presenting them to the world now. <laughs> Wow, congratulations. And I love that as that's what uh, the author Tony Morrison said that the book you want doesn't exist, you have to write it. So yes. the same thing with you with your products, you decided to create the product that you felt like you wanted most. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Now, <laughs> tell us what would you say is, um, how is Mushima tied into your activism? Because I know it's beyond just hair products, you see it more as mm. a movement, I would say, but what do you say about yes. it? Okay, so first of all, let me tell you, my motivations to create the uh, Mokshima platform were always determined by my will to contribute to a better world. So my creative output has, has always been connected to social and humanitarian causes, as I told you. So when I established Mishima, I could only do it so by upholding my beliefs uh, and in line with my value system. So Mukshima on a broader aspect is a platform which curates, produces and showcases issues that gravitate around the issue of black identity. So we curate on art and the way we do that, we, by producing and showcasing uh, shows which are a contemporary reflection on oppression attempts, denouncing and amplifying them. We also, uh, on the ecological sphere, uh, for each bottle of 200 or 500 ml sold, we plant a tree. Mm. It's our way to give back to the planet. On the educational sphere, we sponsor scholarships for master's degrees for exceptional people with very low income. 
on the polit on the political sphere, we work uh, as influencers. We try to influence politicians on equality and civil rights issues. And then we have uh, the last sphere, which is the, the science. Uh, we have a biotech company aggregated in our platform where we research uh, for alternative sources of protein. And as you know, uh, the cosmetic company. Uh, where we have the world's first premium line for texted hair. So, but what I can tell you is that Mushima is a hair care range from the heart that really cares and works. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's amazing. It's I love that you have all of these different um, uh, areas in your in your business that do specific things, especially within the community. As we said, and you talked about earlier, the activism is very much at the center of what you do. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's now, true. The word yes. um, Mukshima means heart in Kimbundu. Am, am I pronouncing yeah. that right? Yes, you are. Oh, good. I was <laughs> practicing. Oh, wow. <laughs> which is um, an Angolan language. So I yes. wanted to ask you then, why is it important that you um, have love and heart at the center of your brand? Because I, I could only work... Uh, because with heart, it comes from there. Mm -hmm. I was pregnant and I was really fed up of the products around me and I, I felt like uh, most of them were a fraud. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I tried to make the best possible products for women like me that were in the same state I was possibly uh, caring for another, another being, human being and... Uh, and provide them with the best products they could possibly have uh, ever. <laughs> so. Are there a lot of, um, I've never been to Portugal yet, are there a lot of um, hair care options for black women or women with multi-textured hair? Or well, did you have we, this we, before we live yours? in a globalized world, so yes, you have lots of options. Uh, the, the, the options, uh, they come mainly from uh, United States and Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, with different, um, how can I say, how can I put it, um, the way we cared about uh, Mukshima products was to make sure that certain ingredients wouldn't be there. Right. Tell us more uh, about that. I know you focus on ingredients is very important. And they tell you, oh, it has no sulfate. Mm -hmm. But then you go and read the on, on the back of the product and you read L'Oreal sulfate. Yeah, mm -hmm. L'Oreal sulfate derives from sulfate. So it's actually the same. Instead of sulfates, because I, I had to fight with the labs <laughs> to eradicate sulfate, no sulfate at all. Instead of sulfate, we found sugars which uh, have a, a, a better contribution to your hair fiber than sulfate. Sulfate contributes uh, towards the, the, the cancer, uh, hair loss, uh, so many other problems that um, can originate on the regular use of sulfates. But that's just uh, an example, a small example. Uh, uh, you have the parabens. And uh, we really try to choose the best possible ingredients and combine it in the best possible way uh, to provide you with the best possible products. <laughs> That's why it took us so long to develop. I them. was going to ask about that. So and during that, um, as you mentioned, for four years, you were sort of uh, uh, testing all of the products and making sure yes. they, that you love them and that they work. So for people listening, our listeners are entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs all over the world. For people listening who have their own products, what would you say um, is some of your advice about how you got started in your journey? Say for testing, for example, did you use friends and family or did you have some other technique for making sure the products were just right? Yes, I, I tested them first <laughs> and then I passed them on to family and friends, as you mentioned, obviously. And then we had to learn uh, to run the 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 professional tests uh, mm -hmm. also by by people I don't know 
but at first it was me and then family and friends. Yes, that's the normal way to go. When you start with a small company, that's the way it goes, yes. Uh, you spot a weakness in the market and then you work with your heart. Then you can meet with strategic partners and dance the dance. <laughs> and dance the dance. I love that. Mm -hmm. Now, with your lab, you have your own lab that you work directly with, right? Yes, we have a few labs we work directly with, yes. Did you have to Not go through one. any kind of um, approval process to make your product because it's different than other things that are there? What was that process like? Or was it just you create your product and then you bring it to market? No, sorry, uh, can you put the question again? Sorry. Yes, no problem. Did you have to go through any kind of um, approval? Say, yes, approval process. Obviously, yeah, the regulatory affairs. That takes also a few months to get mm -hmm. it all done. Uh, but it's all done. We are ready. Ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> now, I yes, it's a, it's a process. It's not... It's not like homemade products. You really need to go through the regulatory affairs process unless you don't want to sell it globally. If you want to sell it uh, just to your friends, it's a different story. Right. Uh, but um, when you put it out there in the market, it, it needs to get all regulated and mm -hmm. tested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Makshima is a um, premium brand, a luxury brand, uh, from what I've read about it. And you said that the, uh, or I saw that the prices of the products sort of range from, I would say, 50 to $250 US. Would you say that's right? Uh, no, it's actually uh, a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more? Oh, okay. Yes. I didn't convert uh, the, uh, uh, the euro yeah. correctly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but... So, um, Yes, uh, the, the the prices are 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 those uh, are a little bit uh, over than the ones you mentioned. Go from sixty. The, the complete line will cost you of around uh, three hundred and fifty euros. I cannot precise it in dollars in U.S. dollars. However, uh, it's uh, five for five hundred ml. Uh, you're not uh, buying a 200 ml bottle, but a, a half a liter, a half a liter bottle. So, uh, and it lasts for uh, the complete line lasts for more than six months. I didn't had to replace my shampoo yet, mm -hmm. and I got it in in December. <laughs> In what ways would you say for people who um, perhaps haven't, well, this is a first, you know, a, a hair care line, well, you're much more than that, but hair products that are in this price range, in what ways would you say that uh, Mokshima is a luxury brand beyond the price? Sorry, in what ways? In what ways would you say that it is a luxury brand or premium brand beyond the price? No, it's the, it's the, the type of ingredients we have uh, chosen uh, for uh, for what makes uh, uh, a jewel mm -hmm. uh, to to be a jewel, it's the type of uh, materials you use. Uh, Swarovski ring, it's not a jewel. It's uh, it's uh, made out of glass. Uh, Swarovski is glass. Yeah. Oh my God! I hope mm -hmm. they they don't get upset with me saying <laughs> this is true. Uh, uh, you, you cannot compare a, 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 a glass with a diamond. Right. So basically, it's the type of ingredients that uh, that we have on our composition that that makes from our product a luxury product. I, I don't. I didn't want to have a luxury product. All I wanted was to have the best possible products for my hair problems, mm -hmm. and uh, and to solve. Uh, uh, the problems we had to use these type of ingredients and made it a luxury product. But uh, actually, you can find uh, products from other brands that are the same price range, but it just uh, it, it comes in smaller quantities. Right. So you think you are paying lesser, but it's not. Yeah, it's just that, like, uh, our conditioner costs six euros, it's two, but it's half a liter. So let's say, uh, I, I, I cannot talk about other brands, can I? Yes, I should, if, you, okay. if you'd like to. Kerastase uh, conditioner costs uh, average, for, at least here in Europe, you pay for 220 ml, 35 euros. 
So I think ours is actually cheaper than Kerestase. Mm -hmm. It lasts for longer as well. So. <laughs> and have you found that customers are willing to pay the, that amount for the products without hesitation once they find out how well they work? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We have customers coming back and we are uh, a, a new brand. Uh, so it's good. It's good to know that they like it and they are coming back and advising other people to buy it. Um, once you try it, I think you will be convinced. <laughs> I'm excited to try it. I think uh, Karen is on, has some on the way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, true. what would you say is your, um, your vision for the brand? Well, I envision to be able to prove that it is possible to be highly conscious, uh, working on a full circle and be profitable. I think it's possible. I, uh, this is why we work with the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. Try to give back the society to the planet and still make a profit. Mm -hmm. tell, us yeah. about your, um, tell us about your upcoming plans and to expand to the US, which I know is something you're working on for the summer. Yes. Well, we'll be uh, going to Atlanta for the Bronner Brothers uh, uh, hair and beauty show. Oh, you'll be near where I am. I'm in Atlanta. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Please do come and visit us. I will. So oh, that'll that be your... great to hug you. Yes, I'm... absolutely. <laughs> so you're at the Bronner Brothers show? Yes, we're going to be there. Uh, and then flying to New York. Uh, and uh, we will have a, a pop-up store in Philadelphia as well. Are you yes. going to continue just to sell uh, online? Or do you have, uh, I know you're doing the pop-up store, but do you plan to have uh, actual locations as well eventually? Uh, uh well, we'll have a, a warehouse uh, functioning in Atlanta, mm -hmm. a permanent uh, warehouse, which will uh, enable us to ship products uh, faster to the U.S. market. And uh, we have um, uh, been uh, in contact with a few hair saloons that will be distributing our, our brand in the States as well. A uh, saloon in LA, uh, a saloon in New York, and I hope to find uh, saloons in Atlanta and in other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. How did you determine which uh, markets to go into first in expanding in the US? Uh, how do I determine? Uh, how do I determine? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, basically, it has to do a little bit with the demographics as right. well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we have a, a, a big community of Afro descents in, uh, in the U.S., and I think it's a very, very good uh, market. Uh, so this is why we are, we are coming into the, new, to the U.S., uh, but obviously, I would love all sisters and brothers to know that we exist, that uh, we are another option to what's out there. And I hope that everyone likes our products. How big is your team at Mukshima? Sorry? How big is your team, your uh, staff at the company? Well, uh, in Lisbon, we are four, four of us, mm -hmm. and then... We have the R&D team in Aveiro, where we have uh, seven more people. Aveiro is up north, here in Portugal as well. Mm -hmm. And then we have two colleagues in Amsterdam. Uh, one of them is flying with me to Atlanta. It's Jay Renteria, our sales director. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the UK, we have our hairstylist, Sherman Hopburn. Uh, we also have um, Benita Mystery Russell and uh, Eleanor, which is our copywriter. And then we have in the States our art director, Andre Castro. Wow, so yes. you have a full, a global team. Yes, we are. <laughs> we have. <laughs> That's amazing. 
Do you yeah. mind um, sharing, and you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm curious about, because um, again, entre- women entrepreneurs are listening and looking at how to start their own products. For you, did you uh, invest in the company yourself, or did you and your husband raise yeah. money for the company, or how did you sort of no. get it started? Yeah, it, was, it was me and my husband. Well, basically, uh, it was our own money mm-hmm. invested. No, no angels yet. Uh, so far, uh, we didn't had the, felt the need to have investors. That's great. So you're doing because, it. Uh, Paolo was very lucky, and let me just tell you quickly his story. Um, he has made some uh, money out of a company he built from scratch called eBody. Uh, it was uh, uh, a company that became a multinational company with uh, offices in in Holland and Silicon Valley. It was an IT company. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, he made his exit a few years ago, and uh, we invested uh, the money in this company. Amazing. I love it. We all have to make sure that we support you guys. No, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsors. So, you know, as an entrepreneur and especially as a solopreneur, you want to make the best use of your time. And I know for me, with booking guests and having appointments and consultations for Support is Sexy and the podcast, I don't have time to be going back and forth with everybody about scheduling. And that is why I honestly love and use Acuity Scheduling. I've been using it for about a year now, and it has saved me so much time when it comes to booking appointments appointments and guests for the support is sexy podcast in fact i would not be able to do it without acuity scheduling i love it and i use it and i was so happy when i reached out to them and they were excited about supporting the support is sexy podcast and i spoke to Kristen barber customer happiness specialist who tells us about acuity and a special offer that they have just for support is sexy listeners so normally if you go to acuity scheduling and sign up up for a free trial. We have a completely free 14-day trial, no card, nothing. Um, But for all of our lovely Support is Sexy listeners, we are giving you guys 45 days totally free. So if you follow the link that Elaine gives you, you guys can get signed up 45 days, totally free. Check out any plan you want. So the highest one, whatever you need, And we'll just let you know when that's coming to an end. And you can either then put in your card info and keep rocking that account that you're on. Or you can even just downgrade to our totally free forever plan. If you don't need some of the major bells and whistles, you can use that puppy completely free for the rest of your life, however you see fit. And that URL is acuityscheduling.com forward slash sexy. That's right. We'll be keeping an eye out for you sexy ladies. Again, that URL is acuityscheduling.com forward slash sexy. So that's A-C-U-I-T-Y scheduling.com forward slash sexy. Make sure you check it out. It's well worth it. A 45-day risk-free trial. And look, we want to make sure that we support the brands that are supporting women entrepreneurs and support is sexy. So check it out at acuityscheduling.com forward slash sexy. And now back to the show. Now, what would you say, Miriam, uh, entrepreneurship has taught you about yourself as a woman? Uh, well, uh, can I use a quote for that? Yes, of course. <laughs> it has actually told me that the best way to predict the future is to create the future. Mm. And that my possibilities are endless. And that, I, yes, I am a warrior. I'm a fighter. And I don't take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, I, 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 I started believing more in my ideas and to give more credit to myself because sometimes as a, a woman and as a black woman, uh, society t- tries to teach us otherwise, but uh, there's nothing that I cannot do. Mm-hmm. What would you say that your um, your personal support network looks like? 
uh, it's a very, very hectic and diverse one. Uh, as, as you understood, we work from different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, people from IT, like Paolo. My background is theater. Uh, we have biologists, uh, designers, uh, hair advisors, uh, sales specialists. Uh, <laughs> uh, we also... Well, according to each uh, project, we engage, like, let's say, uh, just recently we have, uh, we have promoted and produced a conference uh, about a genocide that took place uh, in Africa 40 years ago and was never spoken about. And we did a conference on a university here. So we engage people according to uh, the different projects that we have uh, uh, that are not on the core. But then the, the people I named to you are the people that are in the company at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Benita, Andre, the, the people in the, in the US, UK. Amsterdam and here we are the core uh, then we have we engage for each project different people as well so was that your question sorry that, have I answered yes that was my question I was asking also about you um, you personally as a person who do you turn to when you when Miriam needs support when I need support. <laughs> we forget that sometimes as entrepreneurs, oh. right? We're so busy yes. with the business. Well, yes, my 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 uh my partner in in heart and in business, Paolo, mm -hmm. uh he's one of my biggest uh supporters. So um yes, I turn to him a lot. And uh, I also have, like we all do, close sisters to who I, I, I can uh, open up and sometimes cry if necessary. <laughs> right. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Basically, uh, to two good friends and to Paolo. Yes. So in closing, then, if you think over your life and career and you had the chance to thank only one person whose support was critical to you personally or professionally, who would that be and what would you say? Personally and professionally. Either or. Okay. The person that has been there all the time, obviously, was my mother. <laughs> that we have no doubt. Uh, who has supported me in any uh, critical moments, uh, on the moments I needed the most, even prior to meet Paolo. Um, so if I'm, if I have to be fair, uh, that person would have been her. Uh, yes, my mother, Sonia. And what would you say to her? What would I say? I would say, big thank you, mom. Thank you so much <laughs> for being there for me all the time. Uh, she was, no doubt, the, the person that, that uh, has supported me and still does. And she has the ability to still surprise me, even though we have a difficult relation. <laughs> oh, okay. We don't have, uh, yes, we, we have so at, at, at some moments a very difficult uh, relation, but a very good relation as well. Yeah, I, I, do I make myself understood or it's a relation, um, it's a love relation. I think it's like when you love too much someone, you end up, uh, well, you end up trying to, to uh, advise too much. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> Sometimes she gets too spa spacious. <laughs> right, right. That's how many mothers are. I know, mean, I know. They mean well, but sometimes it's just but too much. Because right? I love her. I love her and she loves me, I'm sure. And no doubt I would, as I do, thank her. As I do every mm -hmm. day. 
when I talk to her. Is she excited about the business as well? She's very excited very and she's good. like a fan of the products. And yes, she is. She is, no Excellent. doubt. So tell us now, Miriam, how we can support you. Of course, I'll have your website and everything, but let everyone know where to find the products and where to find you all on um, social media and anything else you want us to know. Yes, uh, you can find us uh, on our website on www m-u-x-i-m-a dot net mushima dot net or otherwise on Facebook you can find us on uh, Mukshima Beauty or on Instagram you can follow us on Mukshima Official Excellent Thank you so much uh, Can I just uh, uh, add something? Can I offer uh, Three travel, complete travel kits to the first listeners uh, reaching out to our website and dropping a note with, um, with the hashtag uh, of your beautiful program or with, uh, with a hashtag of your name, Ellen Flucker. Um, so we know that they came through your radio uh, podcast station and uh, we will give them the, the the first three people to to reach out oh that's amazing thank you so much that's a surprise i didn't know about that you're welcome <laughs> yeah so the first three people they go to your website and when they purchase they just put in either support is sexy or my name yes exactly Excellent. oh thank you i appreciate that that's exciting i know that's a good pack <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. I'll make sure I put that on the page with your information so that everybody knows where to find it. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting me. Of course, it's been such a pleasure. Now, before you go, what's a parting piece of advice uh, from you to our listeners about anything? Uh, what's my advice? Uh, I would advise everyone to remember that you can create your own story regardless where you came from. And no one has the right to dictate on your future. That you should always stand up for your beliefs. And please, 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 please be who you want to see. Serve yourself as an example instead of projecting on others what you are expecting to see done so this would be my advice (laughs) excellent miriam thank you so much hold on just a moment thank you all right so thank you so much for listening i hope you enjoyed that conversation with miriam miriam thank you so much for all of you listening you know you can go to support is sexy podcast.com and just search miriam m-y-r I A M and her show notes page will pop up with all of the links and resources that she mentioned and you'll see how to find out more about Mukshima. And as promised, you will also see how to get that free Mukshima travel pack. Go to supportissexypodcast.com. The link is there. All you have to do is enter in support is sexy or Elaine Fluker. That would be me. Let them know how you heard about the product through Support is Sexy or Elaine Fluker, and they will send you a free Maxima travel pack. That is to say, they will send the first three listeners to visit the website a free Maxima travel pack. So the first three listeners, which means that's code for do it right now if it's safe to do it now. If you're driving, no, no, let that go. Otherwise, take action if you're interested in getting the Makshima Travel Pack. I have the products. They're wonderful. So definitely check them out. All right. So as always, again, thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate you being here. Please make sure if this is your first time or your 290 something time that you are subscribed to the Support Is Sexy podcast. So this way you do not miss an episode whenever you're ready will be there. So please make sure that you subscribe. All right. Again, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, you know what to do. Go out there and create something sexy. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.